And hang on a minute. Pause this thing right now. How many gill slits has he got? <laughs> He's got eight gill slits. He has got eight gill slits. Uh, <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Shark Bites, the best place online for you to get your shark fix. It's movie time again on the channel and I have been completely inundated with messages asking me to do a movie commentary on this film. But before we jump into today's film, make sure you check out our last movie commentary on Spielberg's 1975 Jaws right here. Today's film, however, was released back in 2018 and it grossed over half a billion dollars worldwide. It also stars the people's favourite tough guy, Jason Statham, as he goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with a giant prehistoric shark. And this is a pre-warning. Obviously, this episode contains spoilers for the movie, so if you haven't seen it and you don't want it to be spoiled for you, make sure you turn off now. So grab yourselves a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy this movie commentary of The Meg with a real-life shark scientist. So I've skipped the first part of the movie where Statham's doing some kind of deep sea rescue mission. And we're here with millionaire Dwight Schrute, who's seeing his underwater marine research institute for the first time. Oh, look at that. I actually wish underwater institutes were like this, but I can promise you they definitely are not. There's only a few true underwater institutes around the world and they are nowhere near as glamorous as this one. <laughs> I believe there are three underwater marine institutes around the world, one of which is in Key Largo, and it looks like this. <laughs> so definitely not like what they've got in the Meg at all. <laughs> Another incredibly high-tech piece of equipment here. This sub literally looks like a ship from Star Wars. <laughs> no, seriously, I swear it's pretty much the same. Look. The Star Wars spaceship is being attacked here by what looks like a giant squid. These definitely do live at depth, although I'm pretty sure they're usually recorded at depths of maybe around 300 to 600 meters. And it's being eaten by Megalodon. Now, we don't know for sure where the Megs would be eating giant squid, but it would definitely be eating pretty large animals. So I guess it's a possibility. It's like 20. So the size she quotes here isn't quite right for megalodons. 20 to 25 meters is just a little bit on the large side as current estimates put megalodon at about 16 meters, which is still massive to be fair. And I suppose you can't really blame them because this research literally came out about three or four months ago. So throughout this film so far, the Meg has been attacking these submarines and chomping down on them for some reason. Here we see Toshi sacrificing himself as the Meg comes crashing in and blows up this sub. <laughs> I can tell you straight up, sharks would not be doing this. They have zero interest in anything that isn't palatable. They might be initially test biting things to see if they'd make a good meal, but they definitely wouldn't be hurtling into heavy mechanical objects like this. It just doesn't make sense for them as they get no reward. It's basic predator biology. We're back in the underwater research center now, and wait, hang on a minute. Is that a Robovac with a shark fin on it? <laughs> that is amazing. I feel like all Robovacs should definitely have shark fins on them. Now, this clip is quite funny actually, and I'm pretty sure the Meg would not be able to see this small child based on the positioning of the eyes. Sharks' eyes are on the sides of their head and this enables them to somewhat see behind them. Now, as they're swimming, they're gonna be shifting their head from side to side in order to see things. So I'm not convinced this is how the shark would be looking at the small child. I've also just realized it's completely stationary mid-water here. <laughs> so sharks don't and can't do this. Most shark species have to continually swim forwards in order to push water across their gills so that they can breathe. It's known as ram ventilation in these shark species. So I'm pretty sure they can't just stop to have a little glance at a small child underwater. 
To be fair, there are some shark species that can do this. However, these species are usually sitting still on the sea floor, like this nurse shark. Now these species are going to be passing water across their gills through a process known as buccal pumping, which is either drawing water through the mouth and passing it across the gills, or drawing it through the spiracles, which are just behind the eyes. The Meg is now on a rampage and is chowing down on boats all over the place. And here we can see he's been wreaking havoc on some shark finning boats. All for a bowl of soup. I think this is actually a really poignant part of the film and never before in a shark film have I seen the producers include a real life shark conservation issue. You'll note I do start saying he here as from an earlier clip we can see that this Meg is a male individual because of the presence of those claspers. This next clip has got nothing to do with any shark science here but it does make me laugh at how well Jason Statham is treading water here with both hands on his spear gun. <laughs> I can tell you right now, treading water with your arms above the surface is not an easy feat at all. So Statham is quite easily nailing this skill. <laughs> okay, so they're chumming the water here. Yep, good. Scientifically accurate. Also demonstrating quite nicely how gross chum is. The Meg decides he's going to attack this cage from below. I suppose this is somewhat accurate as sharks do attack from below. But again, he wouldn't be attacking this cage like he would be attacking an actual prey item because a cage isn't a prey item. <laughs> and hang on a minute. Pause this thing right now. How many gill slits has he got? <laughs> He's got eight gill slits. He has got eight gill slits. <laughs> okay, so this is real basic shark anatomy they've got wrong here. The majority of sharks in the world have five gill slits, with the exception being the blunt nose six gill shark and the broad nose seven gill shark, which, as you might have guessed, have six and seven gills, respectively. There are no known sharks that have eight gill slits, so they've got this terribly wrong. <laughs> Another shot here of the excess gill slits on this Meg. And then we've got this guy happily splashing about in the water even after the ordeal they've just had with this giant shark and all the chum that they've thrown in the water and ah we've got bigger meg <laughs> who leaps onto the boat to take a bite out of smaller meg what a plot twist <laughs> on our last movie commentary in jaws we did clarify that sharks are occasionally known to breach and end up in boats but not for vengeful reasons, and also probably not to grab prey like this. So, baddie billionaire Dwight Schrute thinks he's blown up the Meg by dropping explosives on it from a helicopter, but it actually turns out to be a whale. Sorry, whale lovers. We've got a cool shot here, though, of sharks feeding on this whale carcass, which does happen in real life. Sharks don't tend to pass on an opportunity for an easy meal, particularly in the form of something like a whale carcass. And there are tons of great photos and videos online of sharks doing exactly this. Anyway, the baddie billionaire inadvertently finds himself in the water and of course gets completely chomped by Meg. <laughs> Brutal. I actually quite like this shot here as we can see at the bottom there the impact of humans on the ocean with plastic littered along the seafloor. Subtle, but fair play again for showing this. <laughs> then we've just got complete and utter chaos in this scene as Meg wreaks havoc on the beachgoers at Sanya Bay. <laughs> Meg also chasing down this dude in the Zorb Ball and eventually bursting it is definitely a personal highlight of this film. <laughs> The film climax here with Statham having one final underwater showdown with the Meg, which is munching on the Star Wars ship again. I'm not sure why. <laughs> He's poked in the eye here, although there's no sign of a nictitating membrane, which is a protective layer that sharks can cover their eye with. And it definitely would have rolled over well before Statham could get anywhere near the eye. Just a quick side note, if for whatever reason you are getting attacked by a shark, the eyes are a particularly sensitive area. 
alongside the snout and the gills. These are areas that you should be attacking to try and defend yourself. You know, just in case. After this eye stabbing, the Meg decides it's going to fully breach out of the water for no apparent reason, other than the fact the directors probably thought, yeah, this'll be cool. <laughs> and he pushes the spear, presumably into its brain, and kills it. Classic Jason Statham. As the Meg's sinking here, we suddenly get literally hundreds of different shark species <laughs> appearing out of nowhere to come and feed on the body. <laughs> So firstly, sharks don't just suddenly appear as soon as something starts bleeding in the water. It does take a little bit of time for them to get the scent. And secondly, there is zero chance that the South China Sea has a shark population large enough for this to happen. We also see a hammerhead shark deciding to go for Statham instead of the giant easy meal behind him. But from a shark behavior perspective, this is rubbish. This species is generally very calm natured and there have only been 17 recorded attacks on humans by hammerheads since the year 1580 with zero fatalities. I mean, come on, at least use a shark species that's more likely to display this kind of behavior. <laughs> Clever. And there we go, folks, that was the Meg. Now for me, The Meg is a tricky one because I like the concept of the film. I think it's a pretty cool idea. And we have to take it with a pinch of salt because the story is about a shark that's not been in our oceans for millions and millions of years. There are some things that I do like about it though. It's quite funny in parts and there's a few good one-liners if you like that sort of thing. And they do raise some awareness for some shark conservation issues like shark finning and plastic pollution. But on the other hand, they get some very, very basic shark science wrong. Okay, so for realism, unfortunately for me, it's got to be a four out of 10. Sadly, I just can't forgive those eight gill slits on that Meg. <laughs> And for overall entertainment value, it does take a little while to get going, but once the shark starts causing carnage, it is fairly entertaining. So for that one, I'm going to give it 6 out of 10. Let me know in the comments if you've seen The Meg, and if you have seen it, what do you think of it? Do you agree with my ratings? I want to know what you at home think below. Also, let me know what shark film you would like me to do a movie commentary on next, and I will try my best to oblige. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the Shark Bites channel below where you can stay up to date with all of our latest videos. Until then, see you next time.